All right, we are recording. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Raven Sinclair and I'm here with Maya Nartumit again for our second interview. Hello, Maya. Hello. Um, Maya, this is, this is a big topic. Uh, I've received lots of emails from people, uh, just lots of response about this and wanting to know a lot more. So we won't do introductions obviously again because we went through that in the first recording. But I do want to remind everybody that Maya's website is newearthstar.org, so you can find all kinds of information there as well. And is that the only website, Maya, that I, we should give? Is there any other URL? I have so many of them. I use that as a portal, and if they want to find all of my blogs and whatever, they just click on My Webs on that site, and it'll list them all. But even more importantly, if they want to get on the free mailing list, then every time I put out an article, whatever website is going on it's going to be you know linked to that article that new article coming up on the list so if they if they click on the mailing get subscribe to my mailing list they'll get it all covered good point yeah everybody needs to subscribe to Maya's mailing list and also you do have a, a paid subscription that you know you get a lot more goodies so I do uh, want to yeah, there's that. the Kira portal and there's link on that to the Kira portal as well which is a paid subscription site and uh, the majority of my major videos and um, artworks and stuff, especially the videos, but also you get discounts on my services, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Maya. I would like to start with some terminology that some people just, you know, may not be familiar with or may not know all the nuances around it. So, first of all, New Earth Star, can you address that for us? Yeah, well, that actually was given to me many years ago in the 80s long before I had ever at least read anything about the new earth that now it's everywhere. But you know, in the 1980s, I've not heard anything and we didn't even have home computers, <laughs> much less Google. So uh, it, that's what came to me, you know, is, is the new earth star. And um, I believe the reason star was attached to the end of it is that they wanted to impress us with the fact that this was not just the new earth on this planet, like things get better here, you know, but that it was an actual ascension modality. And we'll discuss in a moment, I'll go into the word ascension is mentioned here, but it was a modality that transforms us from a complete uh, world system one to world system two, which means we leave behind this planet as we know it. And uh, we ascend, that is we shift dimensional vibration into a new uh, state of being, and that that is a world system uh, two. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I get that mixed up. And and so um, in the world system two, there is a, a whole different platform, let's say, of operation. If you think of it all as a giant computer, it's not. But we haven't been created by some sinister beings or even some benign beings. Uh, you know, we live in a hologram, but this is a, of a natural order. What that means entirely, I'm not sure, but Thoth wishes to merely state at this time that natural order means some kind of beings, as we know, did not create it. It's beyond that, beyond our comprehension, but it's a natural state. So, um, uh, but when we move, if you, we think of it as a computer, because see, we're mimicking in our in our intelligence and the way we create things we're mimicking the true platform it, to some degree you know not all of it certainly but to some degree so with our computers and our net internet and all of that we're showing the you know the brain fibers the you know all of this and, and it's and spiraling out into the universe and how the hologram operates and how the master control of that hologram operates Again, just just touching the you know just touching on it, but still it does give some idea. So if you think of that in regard to moving from one platform to another, we're not upgrading the system. We're change, We're moving from an entirely into an entirely new system, and uh, in order to do that, you know we have to move through these gates, these these uh, dimensional um, modalities to even be able to reach a point of ascending as that statement goes meaning moving into another dimensional frame so i i forgot the question that you asked me now. <laughs> new earth star oh yeah right okay so um star 
because we're moving into this completely new vibrational state, it is a star consciousness. It is in its own realm of stellar uh, quantum existence. You know, it's not going to be this star that is, you know, it's a planet, but we have a sun and we have a system. So it's a star system. So we're moving into a entirely new star system. Um, technically, as I understand it, the planet is going back from whence the whole uh, hologram was brought through, and that is into the constellation of Orion to the star sun Rigel. But that doesn't mean that all the souls on this planet are from Rigel, or if they are, they're other souls here, they're just visitors. No, no. Uh, we are all from different places, but we have to understand that as a whole, this is our universe. We have created it. Uh, to represent uh, a consciousness that has been perpetuated through that portal of Rigel. And um, this gets kind of complex. But anyway, so as we move back to the new Earth star, even though we're going back into the, the Earth, is going back into the Rigel dynamics system, it is still new. It's a new level <coughs> of, of quality. And it's not, the, it's not going back to where it was. It's a new focus new level <clears throat> so i think all of that is represented in the words new earth star <clears throat> excuse me got a froggy okay thank you for that what about um and, and you you sort of you touched on ascension that was my next word and you said you would address it as well is there anything else you want to say about that i think you know i've noticed that what i call both intelligence and both streaming and all kinds of those but anyway um what both intelligence was trying to relate to me in that where they are it they often use the word uh the words that relate to us in our language and sometimes biblical words but they are not meant to represent the status quo that's in the bible necessarily they see the bible as a viable a directive that has been largely overlaid by to use a biblical phrase nephilim uh you know layers that is sort of negative or misconstrued layers but but if you laser beam through it and you use geometry and you use other forms you can find that it still exists in its true form that was uh, actually uh, handed down to these prophets of old so um the uh the word ascension comes out of that dynamic and yet it means much more uh you know in the bible Ascension is thought of as like I'm not a Bible student, but well, I kind of was for a while because I was I am technically a priest in the Church of Antioch. But um, Ascension, you know, is Jesus lifting up into uh, we meet him in the clouds, we lift up and meet him in the clouds. Well, we need to look at that as a symbolic picture of um, our light codes that we are composed of, again, if we're a hologram, we're, we're pixels, you know, these pixels are translated into another dimension. They are lifted up, they are taken elsewhere, not lifted into the sky so much as, as a part of the sky, as a part of the cosmos on another level. So um, that is the word ascension from that, that perspective of, of both. Um, as light codes lifting up, uh, we also know that uh, some as some places on the world, on the planet, on the physical earth, will lift up as well. It doesn't mean roots and rocks are floating in the air. It means that the the, the light codes that compose that energy in those places and the the um, the memory that we contain as that we take with us that says this is how it was will come with us in part, not the entire planet, but places that are part of the really true light engendered consciousness where we've done a lot of ceremony or in the past, not ceremony is sort of a, not enough of a word, uh, where we've done a lot of light work, where we have light focuses that go back eons in time, you know, these places are going to come with, but they're going to come as light quanta that can be reassembled and not exactly the same, but somewhat. And what fills the gaps? Well, a lot of it comes with uh, the, the new consciousness that we're going to be building in the pyramidus radius matrix, which brings us to that. And that is the matrix that is forming, has formed, but is continuing to do so, that, and that takes all of the matrices in it on the planet. All of them go inside it, and we go inside it. Um, 
And that is the bridging. That's the workshop. It's the workshop that is putting together what we need for the transition, for the ascension. And it is putting it together in our DNA. It's putting it together in the rocks, and the plants, and the trees, and the flowers, and the birds, and the bees. <laughs> and it's putting it together in uh, uh, intelligence from the uh, center of the planet. The planetary genius is opening up its library, shall we say, on a deeper level and allowing this energy to move up to seep into the consciousness of the planet. Uh, the, the library of Gaia is not the Akasha. It can be imprinted into the Akasha. Whatever is released from it is imprinted in there. But the library of Gaia is, is, is what is in her bones and her fiber and her knowledge, her wisdom of time, eons of time passing on this earth. And that collective uh, knowing or gnosis is is there for us but we have not been able to receive it because a lot has been blocked in our sensory perception but as that opens up through our DNA that Gaia library will start seeping into the planetary oneness and into the Akasha um, and this will guide the pyramidus radius to develop its programs it, its uh, protocol to aid us in the in the movements ahead. Um, now you know this sounds so long term. It sounds like oh my gosh, you know, this could be thousands and thousands and thousands of years. But I honestly don't believe so. I'm never given specific times in that sense. Oh yes, I'll be given a date for you know, uh, like the star streamings of this or that. You know, but some dates that where it depends on huge masses of consciousness and people and humanities and all cosmic events. They're not going to bring it down and say, oh, well, this is the date because there is so much involved and we are the creators of that part of it that sets a time for it. So, um, but I still feel that it's not going to be thousands and thousands of years. That's why the pyramidus radius is in place to help us move faster, to go through the, through the whole dynamic faster. And we are also changing and shifting timelines too that allow a lot of this to move faster. Um, you know, it's almost like a little choo-choo train, choo-choo going down the track. And there's these several different timelines. And as it comes to the switching cross, it says, okay, which one, which one is the, is the shortest distance? But which one is the shortest distance and still contains all the information needed? Ah, that's the one we'll take. And it's a split-second quantum disentanglement. Go to this direction. Go that direction. And these are what, these are microburst timeline switches these aren't major timeline switches where you know the whole reality just goes into left field this these are microbursts we don't even know it you know because if we were here and now we're here we don't know that we were there <laughs> so uh but they're they're short enough they're, they're figuring it out okay here okay we'll go this way and they're increasing we've always had them but nowhere near like we're having them now and that's why a lot of times well, there's several reasons, but one of the reasons why we might be thinking about something else and go, wait a minute, uh, yeah, I, wh what was I thinking? You know, we're, and we do it so much, we're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, maybe I should have a brain scan, you know, but it's actually, these microbursts can affect us, especially people that are very sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. um, but they can also affect people, ironically, on the other side of the scale that have pushed themselves so far into the um, non-assimilative box through greed, through corruption, through uh, intention of not wanting to go with the flow but wanting to keep the power, uh, this kind of thing, uh, they can start falling apart really fast on the mental level. Uh, Whereas we, I say, I put myself in that category, we, those who are not, you know, are, are very sensitive, but we're going with the flow, we'll just have moments of that, you know, and, and we're not going to have that big problem. But the ones on the opposite end of the spectrum are going to be just, you know, they're going to be basically destroyed, a lot of them, because they, not because of some finger of God saying you were evil, but because they're choosing to operate in a way that's just shutting everything down to this new reality experience that's going ahead full of steam i mean it's going you know and if they can't connect to it that's what's going to happen sadly but 
It's the state of affairs that's bringing everything into a crumble right now that is not of the light. Well, everything, I shouldn't say that because everything is of the light on some level, but let's say that is not of the light in the sense of forward movement in response to the signal of light that's being put out at this time. That they're blocking it. They're putting things on the doors. They're covering the shades. Ooh, there's a little bit of light. Let's cover that. You know, They're keeping it all away. So if they do that, they're going to be left at the train station. Yeah. Oh, Maya. Okay. I have so many questions, but let's do one more definition before we get into those. Metatronic. Okay. Well, there's the Meta you can't talk about the Metatron without talking about the Oratron because they kind of relate. So the Oratron is the half light spectrum. And we're not talking about the light that's shining on us, but of course the inner light, the, the, it's the pernal light. And uh, we have, um, Okay, well, let's say this first. That's the half-light spectrum. The metatronic is the full-light spectrum. And the full-light spectrum uh, is full in the sense that it contains all the codes of the metatronic station of light. Now, that goes into the um, Sephirothic tree, the metatron at the top, and there's a whole you know study on that from a lot of different angles. Many of them I don't even know. But according to what I receive, it is like a threshold for this whole universal spectrum that we're working in. So if you're in full metatronic light, you've got the whole picture. We are in oratronic light here with bursts of metatron. Mm -hmm. and everybody has their bursting little metatronic burst, but we're basically in, living in a half light spectrum. Now, when we move into the new earth star reality, we will be in a full light spectrum of, of the metatronic full light spectrum. I imagine there's beyond that, but you know, mm -hmm. we will be there at that time. Okay. Thank you for that. So we talked about our last interview, which has been, I guess, a couple of weeks ago now. We talked about some of the physical symptoms that people are having, and that keeps being added to. But I, so we're all feeling this. You know, everybody's feeling it, even those that are not conscious, as, as you said. But is there a point where we reach, um, as, as a collective, where we reach critical mass and this big ship ha happens suddenly? Yes, there is. And um, that's rather detailed in one particular article I wrote, or, or part of it, something I wrote years ago. Um, but basically, they go through describing how, you know, we're already hearing a lot of sounds coming out of the planet. And these aren't uh, war machines down there. These are natural, in, in most cases, are natural uh, energies stirring in the Earth from the central sunatoma. And... Um, but we will, when we start, we will reach a period. Well, first we're reaching a period of we're having uh, very different uh, light and day cycles and periods of darkness, uh, not complete darkness, but strange things and seeing strange things in the sky. We're already starting to do that, but this will be even more dramatic. And the, uh, the sun will appear red, really red. And so that means the light shining down will start being sort of a rosy and then it's going to get redder very fast. And within weeks to a month, it's going to get redder and redder and redder. And um, people are going to start becoming very disoriented at that time, especially those that are not with the program, so to speak. Those of us who are scrabbling along there and trying our best are going to be helped tremendously. You see, this period of time, is when the pyramidus radius is so going to be so important because those of us who have connected to it in our intrinsic system will be literally fed from the pyramidus radius to keep our rationale, to keep our, our, our ability to understand, to, to, to exist, to breathe, to keep our nervous systems operating. A lot of the nervous systems will simply shut down the automatic, you know, the breathing, the blinking, all of that that's automatic in the body. Uh, mm -hmm will start shutting down in some people that are really, really off course in their, 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 you know, the way they operate. Um, so these things will be assisted by the pyramidus radius and the beings that are coming into it to operate it at this time. It's, it's still going to be challenging for them, but we will be assisted and we will be given a lot more information as it is right now, Raven, there's so much information coming in from so many different people, including myself, and a lot of it, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, a lot of it um, 
is very genuine and, and, and truthful. You know, you know, I mean, it's, it's valid, I guess is the word I want to use. Cause I think ev just about everybody that's putting it out feels truthful, including myself, but some of it may not, they may be more valid than others because we all have our lenses, you know, uh, but there's a lot of valid information coming out and it all seems to correlate with one another's, but in places it doesn't, you know, it doesn't at all in some places and uh, it can be confusing. But you see, the pot is being stirred. There are a lot of different timelines. There are a lot of different potentials. There's a lot of entanglement on the quantum level. People are picking up on different aspects of it. So, yeah, really good stuff is coming through. Very helpful. But on the same time, it can be very confusing. When we get to the point where we're getting closer and closer to this final hurrah, it's all going to coalesce. Uh, the, the, those who can will receive a more correct uh focus point focal point all of us you know that are doing this and that and the other will all start focalizing because the streaming is focalizing see once it it starts focalizing then we can't as channels or whatever you want to call it then uh those that maybe can't seem to handle that will just sort of like well i don't want to do this anymore the channeling bit you know and they'll just move on to other things so we'll have fewer people who are receiving but they're receiving clearer information. And then the next step is everybody starts receiving. That is those who um, are really in the flow. I mean, the others, we can't even address the others at that point because they're going to be so far removed from our reality. We won't possibly not even see them. I don't know. It's almost like this is so started talking to me about the division of two worlds back in 1981. And I kept saying, what, what, what two worlds? You know, I had no concept of what the division of two worlds and one would literally disappear to the other. And, you know, we wouldn't even see each other. So at some point that's going to happen. So I can only address when I say everybody, everybody within the pyramidist radius will begin to uh, know it's not like they're going to be blogging at all. <laughs> you know, they won't have to. They'll just know. And they're not, they won't know everything there is to know, but they'll know everything they need to know to move into the process and to become part of it and where it leads and why. And this will allay their fears and their anxieties because when you, and, and when they'll, they'll begin to see and feel and hear their assistance. The beings, you know, will come in front of masses of people. But this is right toward, just before the blood moon, as Thoth calls it. This will start happening. So it's not like we're sitting here talking to each other and all of a sudden, oh my God, the, moon, the sun's turned, I mean the sun, not the moon, the sun's turned to blood, you know, this is, what, what are we gonna do now? It's like, we'll be prepared for it and we'll know what we're gonna do. And um, there will be challenges, but nothing like you might think. So that's one step. Then the next thing that happens, or one of the next things, is the, the sound. As I was mentioning the sound before, all of a sudden it'll be like the roar, roar of bees. And it'll come through the body, but it won't be hurtful. It, 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 will be, it, will, it can be scary a little bit at first, but it's just, you know, it just takes you over. And as that happens, that really, that's sort of the last phases. Then the whole body starts to transform and you'll still think you're on the planet, but you're really in a pseudo state, an in-between world. Your, your physical body will have transmorphed. So in a sense, you might say, oh, well, you'll be dead at that point, what we think of dead, because the physical body won't be here, but you won't be because you'll have all the the energy components of that physical body in your encoded template. So you and I would be able to look at one another and say, oh, I recognize Raven. Yeah, that's Maya. Boy, she sure is looking great. She's looking better than I've ever seen her before. <laughs> you know, younger in my case. And because you know, the energies are going to be so dynamic that, that the, the stuff that's decaying in you or making you feel sick or old or whatever is not going to be there any longer. But you will still look like you, and I will still look like me, only the younger version. <laughs> and so then, and then, but you know, you'll feel good too. You'll feel that way. And then, uh, huh? yeah. Uh, let me interrupt for a minute. So just to clarify, we're not shedding our physical bodies. We're we're taking them with us, basically. We're transmuting them. Yes. Yeah. And the reason we are is not because we're so attached to them that we have to have them. The reason is because they contain 
the base energy level of who we are as incarnating beings once we accept them and take it into the new state we don't have to keep that anymore we don't have to look like you and me we can look like what are, you know different things different people we can change and then it's okay to be somebody else but the point is we're taking it with us because if we were just leaving the body then we'd be recycling back to this earth again no we're taking the whole platform so we have to take things as they are in their highest state but nevertheless as they are or samples of them in the case of planets and you know like a Noah's Ark you know we take it with us to reassemble it and to recodify it in a new reality if we don't have those codes with us the planetary genius that's coming with as well cannot uh, create from that platform we're not going to an entirely a new spectrum of, of everything it's not like we took a rocket ship and we moved to a planet we never heard of before and all of a sudden oh this is a nice planet let's live here no we're taking this earth earth and experience and moving it to a higher dimensional frequency so we have to take the things that that grow it so we can mm -hmm. grow it in a new form mm -hmm. so that's why we're doing that otherwise we just leave these bodies behind there would be no reason to take them but that's the reason right there or the reason that I'm given, the part that I'm given. Okay. There's, uh, you know, a lot of the, the channelings that are out there talk about um, the second wave and third wave, referring to humans going through this process at different times. What is your take on that? Well, there will be some waves of it. Um, the first, if I can remember, I should have brought up my notes, but the first wave is getting those of us who are really ready through the portal once we go through the portal many not all because everybody has their job but mm -hmm. many of us will come back through the door in our transformed state and we will be uh helping others cross over i think cross over maybe i shouldn't use that term but cross through um that in the final hour are saying wait a minute i'm ready i'm ready i, I see it now i'm experiencing it now but oh my gosh i didn't have my program together now what do I do now what do I do you know I want to go I want to go well there's so come back over and say okay don't panic I'm here with you I've been I'm come I've come back with what is needed and I can bring help bring you through but let's do it together you know just like buddy scuba diving and one person needs to share the oxygen with the mask with the other it's kind of like that it really is and we're sharing the oxygen and we're moving them over so that will happen with one group. Another group will not be doing that. Another group will come through to literally lift the planetary genius out of the planet, in this realm of the planet, and take it into the Earth star. That is a real dicey thing, and I have a whole uh, document on that. I can't, I don't have it memorized, but how that will have to happen. And they will have help. They will have angelic beings helping them because it is so touchy to do. Uh, I guess that's the only word I can describe to bring it through because it has to come through various levels of stagnation and uh, I don't know what to call it I don't want to call it evil you know that's an over abused word but some negative stuff it has to be lifted through intact mm -hmm. I'm using spatial words it's not a spatial thing but it's the only way I can describe it and when they do and then the planetary genius is transferred and then there's nothing left but the husk of the planet but they won't do that until they get until two things happen all the souls that are coming aboard are aboard even the stragglers and the ones that are not coming aboard have gone through their demise uh, as peacefully as possible there's going to be beings trying to help them do that you know as peacefully as possible and and they're ready to move on to another world that's at the level that they can tolerate that they can be in and try to move through again nobody's lost nobody's burning in hell it's not that but you know some people might think they are burning in hell toward the end i mean because we create our own hell and if you're frightened and you're terrified and you're ill and your body can't handle what's going on it's not going to be fun but you know they're going to be every opportunity is going to be given to help them cross and if they can't do it there's going to be beings there trying to help them to alleviate the process you know the painful process and I hate to even talk about that it makes my heart you know sad but um, sorry oh, but that's that's your guidance on it 
Okay. Yeah. So I, I want to backtrack just for a minute, Maya, um, because I had a conversation with a priestess that's in my lineage the other day. She's very young. I think she's about 22 and very much aware and very conscious. And she was telling me that, you know, since she's sort of come to this sort of work, her soul work, I guess, she's realized that there are so many people out there in the world that even used to be in her life that, that are so far removed from her in, in what they think about and what they do and all that, that it's almost as if she's living in a different world. <laughs> and, and I think all of us that do this, you know, any kind of work like, like you and I do, and most of the people that are listening to this can identify with that. It almost seems like when we run with the people that we run with, <laughs> that the rest of the world is, is, it's almost like a different reality that they're in. And so I'm wondering if that will just become further and further apart so that this last phase is not so traumatic. I don't, I don't know. Is that, am I making sense? Uh, what will become further and further apart? I kind of missed that part. The, the difference in, uh, wow, it just got really dark in here. You can barely see me. Barely see you. <laughs> the, there's some cloud cover outside. The two worlds will really hardly, I don't think they'll even notice each other toward, toward the end. That you won't even, okay. I mean, because in order for those of us who are ready to do what we're doing, I mean, it would be like, you know, a lot of the nightmarish stuff, you know, oh my gosh, feed the turtle. I'm sorry. I had that turned off. <laughs> well, he's just gonna, she is going to have to go without food for a while. Uh, where were we? Oh, yes. No, I've forgotten now. Well, you said that you think that it will, that we won't even, at yeah, the very end, we won't, won't even know each other. Yeah, we won't even see the other side because in order to focus on what we need to focus on, Oh, I know what I was going to say. It's going to be kind of like the night of the living dead, you know, the zombie thing. Not in that, <laughs> no. I don't mean not that bad, but it's going to be bad. You know, if there's a lot of people walking around, he said some will not know where they are and they're just walking the streets and they don't, you know, they are like Alzheimer's, you know, a lot of people, uh, there won't be any businesses trying to operate or if it, all the electricity will be gone by then. I mean, the, the, you know, so there won't be any of that, but this moves very fast. This is not like months and months of people suffering and, you know, going crazy. It's, it happens very fast. Uh, mm -hmm. Hours maybe, you know, day, a few days at the most. Uh, so but it, it's still pretty awful. So we can't be in the same environment as that in order to do what we need to do. And the beings need to help us. We'll, we'll be removed from that. And that's a large, well, the pyramid's radius is the thing that keeps that all in, intact. You know, it's kind of hard to go into that space. As you can see, I get really emotional about it because, because I don't like to think of anything like that happening. But look at the things that happen already on this planet. They're so horrible. I, I cry all the time just, you know, Googling. It's like, and I stay off the, the media. I, would, I mean, the mainstream. I, I don't have a TV and I wouldn't go there. But... Right. It's hard to see that kind of suffering and be a human being and not want to just, you know, wonder why it all has to happen at all. And I don't have the answers for that, other than each individual has made their choice. And I don't have the answers to why they made such an awful choice, you know. I wish I did, but I don't right at this point. Even when Thoth tries to explain it to me, I don't get it. <laughs> well, I, I just looked at the time. <laughs> And I have so many more questions, but we're trying to keep these interviews uh, at about 20 minutes, just so people will have, can listen to them on the, on the run or whatever. And, and we've gone over some today, but let's just pick this up for the next time. Is that okay? Uh, and I will try to be in the light instead <laughs> of in the dark. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maya. Thank you, dear. I'm going to turn off my recorder, but let's stay on for just a second. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see everybody else soon. <laughs>